So uh, Thomas Harrell's hypothesis is number one that human language developed uh, from gestures. And in order for human uh, language to develop, uh, what is very important is what he calls uh, shared intentionality. Have same intentions, want the same things. And uh, that requires some skill uh, for putting our goals together. And it requires some motivation. It requires that we want to do things together. All right? Uh, and language can be acquired only, only at the stage when people are able to use gestures and only at the stage when they have the skills to coordinate their intentions and their attention, right? That is uh, his hypothesis. Now, how can this be tested? How can we test that? Uh, we can test that by comparing uh, humans with the, the creatures that are closest to us, apes, right? And one thing that uh, he tries to establish uh, is that learning, the capacity to learn uh, socially uh, is basic and that uh, joint attention and joint shared intentionality are important. Many experiments. Uh, in uh, one series of experiments, uh, he gave the same, same tests to human babies of around uh, two years and a half, and chimpanzees and orangutans, right? And there were two classes of tests. There were uh, tests of physical intelligence, okay? Not of uh, being able to do PE jumps and all that. Physical intelligence. And uh, for example, spatial memory. Remember where something is. Uh, or object permanence, hiding uh, something and knowing that it is still there even though I cannot see it. Um, then uh, rotation, if you change the shape of an object, uh, is it still the same? Then uh, relative numbers, comparing quantities, is more here or more here, right? Uh, addition of numbers, causality. This happened because something else happened, all right? Um, tool use, the capacity to use tools. And all the tests did not assume any use of language, right? Uh, also, and here again, there was no use of language, but there were social tests, and they involved social learning, uh, the capacity to uh, learn from others, communication, not verbal, okay? And theory of mind. The, the about ability to understand that the other person has a mind like yours, that they can uh, understand things, that they want things, that they uh, know things, right? And what were the results? Physical tests, the results were basically the same for apes and babies. So babies were not smarter. Actually, at some uh, of the tests, the tool use, Chimpanzees did better than babies, right? So when it comes to basic intelligence, uh, there was no difference. But at the social test, the babies did better than the apes all the time. And uh, communication, uh, that involves uh, giving clues to people, like where they can find food or understanding somebody's clues about where uh, you can find food. Uh, theory of mind is looking where somebody is looking, yes, following the gaze, or understanding that someone wants to do something. And finally, social learning is solving a problem, for example, uh, taking food that is somewhere in a place where you, you cannot reach, uh, by using a method that somebody else used. And uh, although babies did better than apes on all these tests, here, the difference was huge. The difference was enormous here, right? And 
Uh, I'll tell you uh, that, and I'll come back again to that. Uh, the reason is that uh, apes cannot understand, cannot comprehend the idea that somebody is willing to help them. Okay? That's where it comes from. And uh, so, uh, although uh, apes cannot do certain things, uh, there are some things in common, and particularly uh, he points to the importance of gestures. Uh, apes communicate in two ways, through sounds, vocalizations, and through gestures. Now, the vocalizations are very limited. Okay? Uh, they are very different from human language. Uh, apes produce sounds uh, only to express emotions, when they are angry, when they are scared, and they don't do it to say something. They uh, produce those sounds even if nobody is looking at them. Uh, there is a famous case of the hermit uh, monkey that has different calls uh, depending on what kind of attacker comes. Uh, a different call for the snake, a different call for the panther, a different call uh, for uh, the eagle. Right? Uh, and many people said, well, look, that's language. He says, here comes the snake, here comes the eagle. Uh, but actually, it's not like that, because they produce uh, the cry uh, even if there is nobody around, even if everybody knows that the, the predator uh, is around. Okay? Uh, so they are not uh, communicating something. But those cries uh, develop because they were useful. Uh, the attacker uh, sometimes is scared by the monkey's cry or knows that the monkey knows. You know? So it has some use, but it's not communication. On the other hand, gestures that are being used by apes are communicative. Uh, they have uh, two big types of uh, gestures. Uh, the first is intention movements. For example, uh, a chimpanzee, a baby chimpanzee wants to play. and uh, raises the arm, and uh, the others know that this is a sign, let's play. Uh, this is communicative, and the baby chimpanzee does this only when the other, the partner, uh, is looking. And these gestures are learned, unlike the sounds, which are not learned, are natural. Right? So here is the beginning of communication. And also they have what, uh, what is called attention grabbers. Uh, for example, they uh, hit the ground, and this is, look at me, let's do this. Or hitting an, another chimpanzee, uh, not strong. It's a little on the back, but let's go for a walk. Right? Uh, so there are these uh, gestures of the chimpanzees. And chimpanzees can also learn extra gestures uh, when they live with humans. They uh, learn gestures especially to communicate with humans. Right? Uh, but if we look closer at their gestures, they are fundamentally uh, different from uh, human gestures. And when we look at pointing, uh, we see the difference. Uh, chimpanzees produce pointing gestures. Right? But their pointing gestures are only imperative. Give me that. All right? That's all it can mean. Give me that. Uh, they, uh, they never do that, oh, that's something interesting there, look there. They don't have that kind of uh, pointing. And with the comprehension, it's the same. They can understand a gesture. Uh, for example, if uh, there is a competition between a human and a chimpanzee for food, uh, and uh, the human points to the food, a chimpanzee will understand immediately because it is interpreted as a, the human wants that, and I'll, uh, I'll go first. But when it is purely to share information, the chimpanzees cannot understand. Whereas uh, human pointing, both in production and in comprehension, is informative. So people, uh, one big difference between uh, humans and apes is uh, that apes cannot understand the idea uh, of helping, of sharing information. And this is based uh, on the fact that they cannot uh, understand that the other uh, would want uh, to share goals with them. They are not altruistic. They are more selfish. Humans are basically altruistic. Right? 
And uh, Tomazello also studied uh, first language acquisition, and uh, babies uh, begin to learn language, to acquire language, from nine months on. It's what, what he calls the non, nine month revolution. Uh, it's uh, around nine months that uh, babies uh, are beginning to understand that other people are, have their goals too. You know? And uh, also around nine months, uh, babies begin to share attention uh, with grown ups. And this develops. Uh, Around one year, they, uh, they begin to uh, understand that other, others see things. And uh, after one year, they can understand what other people know. right? And uh, around the same age, they can construct shared goals. They, they start doing things together with people. And all this around the same ages, uh, babies begin to use gestures naturally, and they begin to acquire language, right? And uh, what is uh, Tomazello's uh, explanation about the evolution of language? Uh, is that uh, at some point in the history of uh, the human race, uh, humans uh, who uh, were more altruistic who uh, were cooperating with others, uh, they were at some advantage. Okay? This became an advantage. And uh, in this process uh, of cooperating with others, language appeared as an instrument for communication, uh, as an instrument for cooperation. And uh, he uh, says that his theory turns Chomsky's hypothesis on the head, right? Uh, because communication, cooperation, is at the basis, right? And all the rest uh, is built up on this. And grammar and the more abstract uh, properties of language, uh, they develop they come later and develop on this basis. Chomsky, as we saw before, uh, he said that first comes that grammar, which allows us to think. And while, when we think, uh, we make groups and we want to communicate. Okay? So these are uh, quite opposite points of view. Right? So uh, evolution and uh, of language and human thought is, uh, according to Tomasero, something uh, like uh, this. First, uh, some of our ancestors uh, noticed that cooperation can be useful. If I help you, that's good for me too. Right? Uh, but in time, uh, it was not such a transaction, give, take, on the spot. It was more general. If I help you, I will have a good reputation. Uh, if I help you, maybe uh, it's going to be good in the future. Right? And uh, then uh, everything uh, came to be uh, based on cooperation. 